Hello everyone, this is Mark John M. Martinez and welcome back to my vlog. And now, makalearn na po da. Char. Of course, we are done with Unit 1 and now let's proceed to Unit 2 or Module 2. You know what, living in the 21st century, no observaran yun na to nga. Of course, the center of the teaching and learning process is the learner because he or she will be the one who will discover his or her own learning. That is why we have this set of principles that we need to abide for us teachers to be guided on how we are going to deal with this set of students. That is why our topic in this morning or in this day is learner-centered psychological principles. Okay, so without further ado, let's start. You know what learner-centered psychological principles is divided into four categories. So what are these four categories? Okay, so first, we have cognitive and metacognitive factor. So we define cognitive or cognition as what? Thinking. And metacognitive, it is what? Meta means beyond and cognitive means thinking, therefore beyond thinking or thinking about thinking. So it consists six principles. We also have the developmental and social factor. So of course development as well as social, the way we socialize. So it consists two principles. So of course pasensya na mo medyo na because I'm here in the CTE1 room, naga video. So next. Also, third category is we have motivational and affective factors. So, it consists of what? Three principles. Okay? And, of course, we also have the individual differences factors, which consist also three principles. Later on, you will know that with these four categories, we could really identify certain principles which compromise that certain category. So, di na nato dugayon pa. Let's proceed to the next slide. So, let's start with the first category, the cognitive and metacognitive factors. As what I have said earlier, that cognitive, it means what? Thinking. And of course, metacognitive, it goes beyond thinking. So, let's start with the first principle. Di na nato lang ayun pa. First principle is we have the nature of learning process. So let me read it to you. The learning of a complex subject matter is most effective when it is an intentional process of constructing meaning from information and experience. According to the principles of learning by Horn and Pine, they stated in the first um, principle that Learn, learner, or learning is an experience which occurs inside the learner and is activated by the learner. In short, the learning process should be what? Intentional process. It means kawala na pugos ang estudyante para magtoon. Therefore, it comes from their intrinsic um, motivation or authentic selves na gusto sila makalearn. Yes, so therefore, that is the nature of the learning process process that is why in public schools of course the yud na to basta basta pugson ang bata tun ini tun ini tun ini without knowing first if they are what ready to learn so always bear that into your mind so that is the nature of the learning process because if the students are ready to learn or they are what it is it comes from their intention nga makatuon sila. Therefore, they will be an active participant of the teaching and learning process. So next, we also have goals of the learning process. Let me read it to you. The successful learner over time and with support and instructional guidance can create meaningful, coherent representations of knowledge. So when we talk about goal, therefore, each one of us, we do really have goals to achieve. 
For example, in our lesson plan, di ba nakastay doon ni our lesson objectives and our lesson objectives must be coherent with the also or must coincide with the goal of also of the school. So, sige, balik tayo sa lesson plan. In our lesson plan, we have three objectives. The cognitive or the cognitive, affective, and psychomotor. Later on, i-discuss na na isa-isa. So, of course, the child will be what guided by those objectives stipulated in our lesson plan. Therefore, makabalo sila unsa ilang kailangan i-achieve on that particular lesson. Therefore, it will give direction to their learning. Most especially in the process of learning. Ikaduha, ay ikatulo na di ay. Construction of knowledge. The successful learner can link new information with existing knowledge in meaningful ways. Of course, when we talk about construction, therefore, there is what linkage between our prior knowledge with the new knowledge. So the best example of this one is, of course, the K-12 curriculum. Why? Because... We go with simple to complex. There is what in increasing complexity, di ba? As we teach, therefore, if in grade four, ay if in grade three science, nakadiscuss sila o kanang about the organs of the human. Therefore, in grade four, they were they will also discuss the organs of the human, pero with increasing complexity. Therefore, the students could be able to what. Make use of your his or her prior knowledge to grade three siya about the organs of the human. Then malink niya to the new information niya yung nakuha to grade four na siya. That is why as a teacher we need to make use or we need to let our students construct their knowledge because in this way they could learn meaningfully. And of course we also have strategic thinking. The successful learner can create and use a repertoire of learn of thinking rather and the reasoning strategies to achieve complex learning goals. So in cognitive we have this what we call strategic variables wherein the students will think of certain strategies. Therefore, strategies siya kay daganman. Dira ano magawas ang plan A o plan B. For example, plan A ni student mag-study diri asa balay. Pero, nakuha ni student nga murag samok man mag-study sa balay. That is why, ang plan B ni student mag-study siya sa balay sa iyahang classmate. Or mag-study siya dito sa ilahang payag. So therefore, the students must have this what we call strategic thinking. Most especially in the subject like mathematics because in mathematics the teacher will just give us a um, problem therefore we will be the one who will find ways or find solution Ganun yon. number five thinking about thinking or according to john flavel note that one john flavel metacognition so higher order thinking for selecting and monitoring mental operations facilitate creative and critical thinking. Because when we talk about thinking about thinking, we are thinking the way we think. For example, we tend to ask ourselves if we are applying this one. Am I learning? What are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? How can I turn my weaknesses into a strength? Ganun yung mga tanong. Nakatoon na ba ko? Tama ba akong answer? Hala, tama kaya ni ako ang mga gipang bukat? So, if you keep on asking that to yourselves, therefore, you are making use of this thinking about thinking or metacognition. That is why, in schools, dapat, we need to apply this one. That is why, naagi ka ng mga isay writing, di ba? Now, we tend to ask our students, Na, what are the things na inyo ang mga natunan na? Therefore, they tend to reflect on the process. As they reflect, they could learn out from it. Yun yun. So next, 
Number six, it is the last principle under cognitive and metacognitive factors. So learning is influenced by environmental factors including culture, technology, and instructional practice. You know what? We really need to contextualize our lesson, most especially in elementary as well as in secondary and also here in tertiary. Why? When we talk about contextualizing, therefore, we tend to localize our lesson. For example, in elementary, makarelate yun ang mga BA and ane. In elementary, let me share you some experience of mine. During our internship, grade 3, uh, na-assign ko sa grade 3. Then, pag, uh, the subjects that were assigned to me were English, Science, uh, yes, Science, and including also Aral Pan. So, paghingi ko ng book sa Aral Pan, pakatag ni teacher ko, La, ma'am, lahi lagi na isakuan sa usual nga libro. Why? Because tanan topic is about Agusan del Sur, about Caraga region. Therefore, there is contextualization of the lesson, most especially in Araling Panlipunan. Therefore, the students know first kung unsay na as iyang palibot before we go to the broader context. Yun yun. Also, in other subjects, for example, in mathematics, science, English, we need to contextualize the lesson through what? Of course, by having concrete examples na makarelate sila. For example, in mathematics, imuang example sa mga bata, nagtudlo ka sa East Bunawan. So, pagtuloy mo sa East, muan natin ka sa mga bata. Okay. So, karun, mga bata, ang problema na to, kay unsa ang or pilak ang kalayon sa is padulong sa askat oh therefore there is what contextualization of the lesson to the students most especially with the use of what concrete examples yun yun okay na next and now let's proceed to these motivational and affective factors okay so, of course, when we talk about motivation, it is your what eagerness to do something. You are motivated. And kapag sinabi nating effective, more on attitude, values, and the like. So, murag nanay, nagpanday din na pita. Pasensya. <laughs> Number seven, we have motivational and emotional influences on learning. Let me read it to you. What and how much is learned is influenced by the learner's motivation. Motivation to learn, in turn, is influenced by the individual's emotional states, beliefs, interests, and goals, and habits of thinking. Always remember that if you are emotionally disturbed, therefore, you, there's a big tendency that you will not be motivated. For example, Sa klase, tiks-tiks mo sa imuang uyab, tawag-tawag. Then, sa dihang, di bulagan da ay dayon ka sa imuang uyab. Pag bulag dayon sa imuang uyab, therefore, nasakitan ka. Masakitan yun ay, nasakitan ka. Pag man yung kasakit, siya, sige, miskwila na lang po eh. O, pag atun mo sa eskwilahan ka ron, bisang pagkapila, lingaw kayong activities, ang gihatag ni teacher sa emwa, but you are not emotionally, um, but you are not emotionally, um, stable, because kigibulagad ka sa emong uyab, nasakitan ka. Therefore, dili ka motivated para magtuon. In elementary context, yun, ani ni siya. For example, ang bata, kanang, wa siya'y kaon gikan sa ilang balay. Therefore, pag abot niya sa eskwilahan, motivated ka siya makatuon. Dili kay emotionally disturbed siya kay una-una niya. Hello, oy ka, butom na ka ayo. So therefore, as a teacher, we need to what? See to it that our students are ready for our lesson. We need to assess whether they are uh, facing some challenges in their lives so we could really give our advice. Yun, yun Para ma-motivate sila sa toang klase. Number eight, intrinsic motivation to learn. Of course, we have two kinds of motivation. The intrinsic at 
extrinsic. So let me read it to you. The learner's creativity, higher order thinking, and natural curiosity all contribute to motivation to learn. Kapag sinabi natin intrinsic, therefore it comes from the child. Gikan sa iya mismo nga, motivated siya. Or in short, it comes from his or her authentic selves. Walay ni push sa iya, ang ni push ra sa iya, kaihang kaugalingon. But kapag sinabi natin, extrinsic, therefore, there is someone who's what? Who's motivating the students. For example, kani mga rewards. Di ba sa klase, basta na reward si teacher nga makaon, mga candy, active ko yung mga bata, motivated kayo sila. Labi nag ang teacher, siguro yung ingon, very good, excellent, o uban pa. Di ba motivated ang mga bata? But as a teacher, don't abuse extrinsic um, reinforcement in order to motivate your students. Nga naman, magsalig na na sila. Di na na sila mo participate kung wala kay makaon, wala kay praises na ihatag. That is why, let's make use of intrinsic motivation sa mga bata. Kung saan man na siya, nga, ma, kuan, motivate sila intrinsically. Ino ni mo. Sige. Sa inyong pag-eskwela, kung saan mati inyong gusto makabot ng anong eskwela mo? May na din mga bata, teacher, teacher, gusto ko may mong teacher, ay, teacher, teacher, gusto ko may mong doctor. Para matabangan ang mga nai, sakit. Mm, child. So of course, therefore, with that question of yours, ma motivate sila. Inunday mo, sige, kay gusto mo kamay mong doctor, dapat maning kamut kag iskwela, maminaw ka kay teacher. So therefore, just a big tendency ka ma motivate ang mga bata intrinsically kay gusto man nila may mong doctor, therefore maning kamut gid sila. Yun yun. Next, number nine. Effects of motivation on effort. Let me read it to you. Acquisition of complex knowledge and skills requires extended learner effort and guided practice without learner's motivation to learn. The willingness to exert effort, this is unlikely without coercion. So, if, uh, the motivation as well as the effort has a positive relationship. Therefore, kung mataas ang level of motivation, there is a big ten tendency that also the level of effort will increase. Let's go to the context of uyab-uyab. Uyab-uyab na po na itong isgutan na anin. Sige, uyab-uyab. Kung ang lalaki na ay gusto sa babae, kani siya. Kung motivated kayo ang lalaki, gusto kayo sa lalaki nga mauyab ang babae, therefore, ang efforts yung pagpanguyab, taas po. Maghataog na kong teddy bear, Bulak, nga malaya vra, Kung sa paman, Og ilaglaag, Magkwikwik, magfishball, Ambot ninyo, O kana siya. Therefore, Kung di kayo love sa lalaki ang babae, There's a big tendency nga, Di kayo siya motivated, Mag-exert og effort. Therefore, Kung saan man effort, Wala ra kayo. Muchatra, Hello, Pidi manguyab, Char. O, oh. That is the nature of motivation and effort. Therefore, if your students are motivated in your class, therefore, the, their outputs, or you could really see that they exerted effort on their respective outputs. So we are done with the first two categories. Let's move to the three. Happy thing yun. Developmental and social factors. So, number 10. Developmental influences on learning. As individuals develop, there are different opportunities and constraints of learning. Learning is most effective when differential development with across physical, intellectual, emotional, and social domains is taken into account. According to the Republic Act 10533 or the Enhanced Basic Education Act of 2013, one of the features of the K-12 curriculum is a no developmentally appropriate our lesson must coincide to the developmental stage of our mga bata lisod pud mutudlo ka og kanang kuan advanced algebra sa grade 1 dili good basics sa gyud imong ipangtudlo sa ilaha di ba that is why natin ginatawag spiral curriculum increasing complexity from simple to complex and aside from that one, of course, in order for our child to have a holistic development, 
Of course, we need to take into account the three domains, the cognitive, the affective, and the psychomotor. Yun yun. Kaya sa lesson plan natin, present dapat yung tatlo, or at least dalawa. Pero mas better yun nga tulo, para holistic yun ang development sa bata. Next, social influences on learning. Learning is influenced by social interactions, interpersonal relations, and communication with others. Of course, we are social being. Yes, there are also people na introverts. Sila di sila ganahan magipag-join sa uban. But most of us, we tend to what? Socialize. Meron nga tayong kasabihan na birds of the same feather flock together. Therefore, our child or our student, we need to give him or her what? Kana good role model nga makapalibot sa ila, nga maka-influence sa ila ha. Most especially in elementary nga grabe gud kay ina ka critical stage for development. Always remember nga kung unsa ang nakapalibot sa environment sa mga bata, of course, there's a big influence or impact to their attitude, the way they learn, or sa ilahang kaugalingon yun. That is why we need to, of course, surround the students with moles or, of course, positive lang nga mga butang. And of course, last na ni, individual differences Factors. So, di na to lang nita. Number twelve, individual differences in learning. Learners have different strategies, approaches, and capabilities for learning. Learning yun that are function that are a function of prior experience and heredity. Of course, as a teacher, we need to make sure that we consider the diverse nature of our students. Each one of them, they do really have their own learning style as well as multiple intelligences. Iba pa si nasa ilaha, visual learner, auditory learner, tactile learner, kinesthetic learner. That is why we need to consider that one. That is why in classroom, pinaka gina-encourage yun or gina-encourage yun na to ang kanang mga audio-visual learners. Aids or audiovisual presentations that will what consider those students nga visual learners and of course to those learners nga fond of what listening. So also when we talk about multiple intelligences, we need to consider that one. Basin mo hatag taka ng kuan sa to mga activities sa to mga estudyante nga bili suitable sa ilah. That is why. We also have this what we call kanang differentiated activities ng ipanghatag nato sa mga bata. For example, igrupo nato ang kanang koan kanang musical ng mga students, mga verbal linguistic ng mga students, mga logical mathematical students. Then we give them different activities that coincide also with our lesson. And number thirteen, learning and diversity. Learning is most effective when differences in linguistic learners' linguistic, cultural, and social backgrounds are taken into account. Always bear into your mind that one of the features of the K to twelve is culture sensitive. That is why in classroom we tend to be what inclusive. Therefore, education for all. Tapat wala tay pinalabi. In short, in our class, for example, in elementary. We need to make use of what different languages. Nga mak in such a way nga ang student makatuon. And aside from that one, we need to also consider their social backgrounds or their socio economic status. Masin magrequire kay tag mga activities nga mahal ka ayo, matili ka afford ang mga bata. Yon we need to consider that one. And of course, lastly, fourteen standards and assessments. Setting appropriately high and challenging standards and assessing the learner as well as learning progress. So of course, we need to set high expectations to our learner. That is why in the very first um um in the very first part of your lesson, you need to tell your students what are the objectives that they need to achieve. 
and also your assessment must also coincide with their differences. For example, kaning estudyante kay kanang hilig siya into writing, therefore, or kaning group of students hilig siya into writing, therefore, your assessment to them is also kanang mo coincide sa ilang gusto, which is ang magsulat. Kaning mga estudyante kay gusto sila o kanang mga drawing drawing. So therefore, your assessment must also coincide with their what gusto so those are the things that you could do when we talk about standards as well as assessments okay so of course so those are the things that you need to remember when we talk about learner-centered psychological principles again what are the four categories tama and 14 I am encouraging everyone to please, if makaya, memorize why. Because this will really help you or guide you as future teacher in considering or in taking into account the diverse nature of your students. So those are the things that you need to remember when we talk about learner-centered psychological principles. If you have questions, queries, comment down. And of course, don't forget to leave a like. And of course, subscribe on my channel. And again, this is Mark Jan M. Martinez, your poking instructor. Bye-bye.